Hey, what's going on everyone? This is iReviews back with another video and iOS 17 is finally coming out next week with a ton of new features and changes and millions of people will want to update to iOS 17. But first of all, before you update your device, there are a few things that you need to know regarding this software. So I'm about to show you guys 10 things that I believe every iPhone user must know before they try to update their iPhone to the new iOS 17. First of all, as I said, iOS 17 is coming out next week to the public. It should be released on Monday, September 18th, and the release time for this update should be around 10 a.m. Pacific time. Now, of course, most people won't be living on that time zone, so you can just compare time zones to know when iOS 17 will be released on your location, and that way you can update your device the minute it comes out. Of course, it will be an over-the-air update, which you can easily installed through the settings app. The second thing you need to know regarding iOS 17 is that not all devices that have been supported by iOS 16 will be also supported by the new iOS 17. Actually, Apple has dropped support for three different devices. So if you have an iPhone 8, the 8 Plus or the iPhone 10, then you will be unlucky this year. iOS 17 is not coming to your device, which is again a very bad thing. A lot of people actually use those devices, especially the iPhone 10, I believe, is still a great device. But unfortunately, Apple has decided to drop support for those devices with the new iOS 17. The next thing you need to know is the size of the update. iOS 17 will be quite a big update. Of course, it's a major release, so you can expect it to be around 4 to 5 gigs. That will always be different based on different devices and, of course, based on different software that you might have currently installed on your iPhone. But just to be on the safe side, make sure that you have enough free storage on your iPhone in order to install iOS 17. Now, I suggest you have it around eight to nine gigs of free storage on your iPhone. Of course, the device will have to have that free storage to install the software, even though the software won't be that big, the device will still need to have way more storage than the size of the update in order to be able to install the update. Now to check that, you can go to your settings, go under general, and then go under iPhone storage, and just make sure you delete a few things if you don't have enough free storage. I would suggest deleting apps like you can see right here. I have Instagram with it has more than four gigs of storage that it has occupied on my device. If I don't have enough storage to install the update, I would just delete this app, install the update, and then come back and reinstall the app on my device. iOS 17 will feature a lot of different improvements, a lot of great new features, but there will also be some features that you probably have heard of, especially if you watch WWDC 2023, that actually haven't made it to the iOS 17 release and they will most likely be released with the next updates of iOS 17, 17.1 or 17.2. One of them will be the new journal app that Apple has introduced that it's not coming with the initial release of iOS 17. Other things will be AirDrop via the internet, not AirDrop has had some great improvements with iOS 17. There is this great feature that if you start an AirDrop and just move away from the other phone, the AirDrop will continue via internet. That is not available with the initial release of iOS 17. Hopefully it will come really, really soon. And also name drop that Apple has introduced with iOS 17. It works with iPhones with the initial release of iOS 17, but won't be available if you want to use it with an Apple Watch. We will have to wait and see for Apple when they will bring that update so you cannot name drop to an Apple Watch yet. Next up are some features that are not coming to all their devices. So if you have an iPhone with the always on display, you get the standby mode, the actual standby mode. If you have an older device, then the standby mode will stay like that only for 10 seconds and you will have to tap the screen in order to bring back the standby mode. Otherwise, only the devices with the, with the always on display will feature the full standby mode that stays like that all the time. Another thing is point and speak. There is this accessibility feature that is coming with iOS 17 
and that feature basically allows you to just point the camera using the magnifier app and it will speak for you so if you point it at a door it will speak and tell you what that is that is also coming only to the newer devices it won't be available on the iphone 11 models it will only be available to the devices that have the lidar scanner that like black dot that you can see right at the camera of your device and then there are also some effects that are coming to FaceTime, the portrait effect, which is not coming also to older devices, the iPhone 11 series, which are again, the oldest devices to support the new iOS 17. When it comes to new updates, especially bigger ones like iOS 17, a lot of people will want to know how the battery life is before they update. Well, in my experience using this software for about three months now, it's actually not the worst ever, not the best ever. If you had a device on iOS 16, I just would tell you that you can expect to have about the same battery life as on iOS 16. So here's what I got the last few days here using iOS 17. So seven hours, 50 minutes right there with about 75% battery, which is great. But then we come here at around 80% battery, six hours right here at 100% battery, seven hours, 47 minutes at a battery health of 89%, which is not the best ever but it's also not the greatest ever now one part where iOS 17 won't disappoint is the performance performance on iOS 17 is actually really really great and you can see the Geekbench score here 7000 points on the multi-core score this is the best score that I got on my device here iPhone 14 Pro Max with Geekbench 6 it's actually an amazing score now you couldn't get close to this with iOS 16 iOS 17 just performs way better and also the single core score is great 2645 which is a great score to have for the single core score again using this on daily basis it performs really well you can see that it's quite a polished update it's actually really really good and it has been like this through all the beta stages and of course with the next updates it should even be way better now when talking about bugs of course through the days that i've used this software i had a few bugs especially the keyboard was kind of buggy here so especially on the spotlight search i had problems sometimes with the app library not showing up at all but those problems have been fixed with updates that apple has released to the betas of ios 17 and overall it's actually quite good of course there will be like minor bugs and those will be different for different users and different devices but again just in general using this device on iOS 17 since beta 1 I didn't encounter any like major bugs that would actually make this unusable it's actually quite good when it comes to performance and bugs the next thing you need to know regarding the new iOS 17 is of course when should you update should you update on day one once Apple releases this software or not well in my experience again using this software I would actually update but using this on beta of course there will be a few million of people using this on beta but once it gets out to the public that's what the real test is of course there will be tens of hundreds of millions of people using this and there's where we can see like if it has any like major issues or bugs or things like that so what i would suggest you do is actually wait a day or two just to see the initial response from the public regarding ios 17 of course before you move on and install this software especially if you want to install it on your main device and last but not least is of course updating as I said at the beginning of the video, this will be an over the air update. So all you need is have more than 50% battery charge on your iPhone. Of course, an internet connection, eight to nine gigs of free storage. All you have to do then go to general software update and you will find here update for iOS 17. You can go ahead and install it from here. If you had the betas and you probably have the RC version installed, then you won't get the update at all because that's the exact same update as the RC version. So that's basically it for this video, guys. This is everything you need to know before you update your device to the new upcoming iOS 17, a really exciting update with a ton of new features and changes. So that is it. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you on the next one.